Hey, I was so excited about Teams approvals that I wanted to do a quick demo for you using our current environment because it may take some time to get to you if you don't see it yet. So notice I hit the three dots and now I'm clicking on approvals. If you don't see it listed right away, it may even be pinned on your left navigation automatically, but if not, you can always go find it in the apps. Just click more apps and that's where you'll find where you can look it up. And it should come up here at the very top by Microsoft. So you may not have to go here. I'm just showing you in case, you know, you want to make sure that it's not available in your tenant. You can come here and just see that it, if it's there or not. Now you can, you can just open it, which will open it as a full app tab. Or what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to install it into a team so we can test it. But notice you can add it to a team or you can add it to a chat. So I call this contextual approvals because wherever you are in teams, you're able to just launch that approval. And it could be in the context of either a team channel or a team instance. So I'm going to look for my test channel here. And I think I have one called planning test. And let's see. Yep, I do. It's called general planning test. And so we're going to just use that one. And notice it says set up a bot. Go ahead and say yes. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and click on that to set up our uh, Teams instance of approvals. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for this demo. Notice immediately there is a bot associated with this. So you can actually see um, what the bot does. And in this case, this bot only does approvals. Okay, so think about that. Um, so now we're in the approval area. I'm in a conversation on this team. And notice the icon here on the bottom for approvals. It's right here. It's the little check mark with the arrow wrapped around it. Now, uh, understand that I've decided that I want to get someone to approve an image that we plan to show on our share and on, on our customer facing website. So I'm going to create an approval at the same time that I'm planning to upload this document. So I'm doing two things in one step here. So I start by clicking on the approval icon and giving this approval a name. I'm using a name just like um, that will that will be easy to recognize, say in a list, if you're looking at many approvals. And then I can put approvers. I can put as many as I want. If I have more than one, I can click require a response from all approvers. But I don't want to spam anybody else with this demo. So I'm just going to put myself. As soon as you put a second person, though, you'll be able to toggle require a response from all approvals. And it doesn't need a particular response. It just needs each of the approvals to respond. Now, down here in the details, um, which comes next, what you want to think about is what are the things that you want them to think about as they're doing this approval? So you might want to give them a heads up. Please check this image to make sure it's customer facing ready. Um, or please read this document to make sure all the financials are accurate. So I always make it a best practice to put details in the approval area so that people know what to do. Like, what am I looking for from them? Right. And then notice that I can put as much tech as I, text as I want, but do think about the, the height of this card because this will be an adaptive card. So we want to be careful not to make it, you know, like attack our screen being too long. But there's my favorite thing, add attachment. So basically, I didn't have to upload the file and then point them to it. All I had to do was attach it here. And what Teams is doing for us in the same motion is uploading it to my OneDrive so that people will be able to get to it. Now, I believe if we're using a Teams instance, it will upload it to the Files tab of Teams, which is SharePoint libraries. And if we're in a conversation, it goes to OneDrive. But uh, since I've only been doing it by myself, it's all been, it seems to be all going to OneDrive. 
Now, I'm not going to talk about the custom response right now, but I just wanted to brag about this ad attachment for a second. Now, notice I can only add one, but I'm really happy with being able to add one. And we'll talk about custom response later. Let's just send this. Now, wasn't that easy? So in just these few steps, I have initiated an approval with approval with anybody I wanted. And I've also uploaded a document, provided a link to, the, to it, and given the approvers access to it. All of that has been done in that one task. Now, notice that the person who's requested gets a notification, if their notifications are turned on, of course, that they have a new uh, request that has come in for them. So they have a couple of options. They can go to their activity. You'll notice there's a one there. So there's a red one at the top or they can go to the actual approval dashboard and view the details. Now I'm viewing it right here in the channel, so I kind of have a record of what I've done, but let's go and pretend we are the person that has to respond. Um, what they might do if they do this often is they might right click on this and pin this app to their left navigation. So I like to keep it pinned there and when you get it, it might automatically be pinned for you but you always have that option with any app. Notice that at the very top, we have the thumbnail approval for Twitter. So this is a customer facing um, a notification that's gonna be posted to Twitter and we're asking for approval for that. And so there it is marked as requested. So anytime you receive a request, it'll be marked with a status of requested. It'll tell you when it was requested by whom and who all the approvers are. Okay, as long as you're one of them, you will see this here, right? Okay, and now you can click on it. You can actually scroll through this, read your details, um, add comments to it. But before I approve, I just wanna show you, I actually can access that thumbnail just by clicking on it. It will take me out of Teams. It'll bring me into the OneDrive location or the, or the files location where it's found, and they can review it there. Right. So just keep a keep. This is like the best thing to me since baked bread, the ability to have attachments associated with my approval. And then the other thing I love is you might remember about a year ago, I did a power apps app where I was tracking a flow from requested all the way to responded. And I used a, like a little diagram similar to this. Teams has done that for us. It shows us starting at the bottom who requested it and when, and then it shows us who's pending response. And as they respond, it'll add to that. So we get these automatic diagrams of how this process is running right here in the context of Teams, right? And it's now I can go ahead and approve it. Of course, of course I chose to approve this one. Notice that um, now that notification is back to the person who requested it, letting them know that that person has responded and what their response was. But again, if they go to the dashboard here, they will see it at the top, you know, the most recent approvals, and it would be marked approved. If they rejected it, it would have been marked rejected. If they canceled it, it would be marked canceled. But it updates as you go and also gives you that single view of everything's requested to you and basically what has happened, what you got, what you got as a result. Now I'm going to hide a bunch of stuff over here and we're going to do this just a slightly bit different because I want to show off the custom responses and how easy they are to do. So I'm just going to do this kind of ad hockey. I'm going to pretend I have another image that I want to upload, but this is a different team that has to approve this image. They have to approve it to make sure it's compliant. So we have rules around what images we can use in our presentations and so forth. And so there's a team of people that make sure that they're, you know, they're, they're in good shape uh, for customer facing usage. And this is going to our asset library so people can use it for decks, for, for presentations, for anything, right? And so sometimes we might purchase the uh, image, sometimes we might have someone make it, whatever we might do, we have to pass it through this process. But we don't want approve or reject here. So we're gonna turn on this custom response and we're gonna mark it compliant 
or non-compliant. And this is very important to our company because they don't consider themselves approvers in this team. They're just saying, are, is this compliant or not compliant to our rules on uses of images, right? And then so I can send that. So slightly customized in two or three extra clicks, right? It's requesting it right now. I'm just getting rid of this extra thing. Notice it, it notifies the requester. You have a request rating. They can go back to the approvals app and, and find that request. Notice it's up here. It is still requested. So no matter what kind of approval you get requested to do, it'll be marked requested. You can get rid of the noise by filtering for requested. And now you only see what's requested. You don't see the things that are already finished and so forth and so forth. So sometimes, but don't confuse the word custom for custom response with the word custom here in this filter. They are two different things. Okay, so now we've marked that status column as requested. And I'm just going to show you the other way that I could have discovered this as the approver. It is also going to show up in my activity feed. So therefore, I'll see those little red dots up there in case I missed the notification. Um, and here I will see a summary. Notice that it includes the, the image that I can actually review. Um, and then it has a view details button. And this is what I will use to respond. Again, you see this beautiful diagram showing me what's going on and what has happened and the custom responses that we set up. All responses include cancel, so you, you wouldn't get rid of that. So now I'm reviewing this image. I think it looks pretty good. Well, actually what bothers me about this image is I think I would like a little bit more diversity in these people. So since I would like more diversity, I'm going to indicate that in the comments that this one needs a little bit more diversity. Um, and then I'm going to mark it non-compliant. All right. So it adjusts to that custom scenario so that people can use the words that are best for them when they're handling approvals. Notice at the top here, you can see that it is marked non-compliant. And so I really love the way this works. It's super cool. You've got to try it. And even if you just try it just to look at the cool diagrams and the way it handles attachments and uploading them for us, even it'll replace it if we upload the same attachment twice, you know. So really cool implementation of approvers approvals in Teams. And by the way, if you're doing a Power Automate approval, they will show up here too, as long as you use the start and wait action for creating your approvals. They will also be included here. So Power Automate, not at all left out. It's right here integrated for those scenarios where you need more workflow after the action, right? So maybe you have some conditions that will apply. Enjoy!